All right, this is real life. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. This is Paul Thorne. Oh, I forgot to tell you my name. This is Paul <laughs> Thorne, and this okay, is okay. real life, real music. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Thorne, and this is real life, real music. Real life, real music radio. With your host, Kyle Hutton. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing good. How about you? Man, I'm doing better. I'm doing better now that I get to sit down and talk with you. It's been nine years. What's up with that? I've been crying the whole time. <laughs> I missed you, man. You been doing all right? I've been doing great. I've been doing great. You know, I'm glad to see you made it back from Steamboat Music Fest. That was kind of quite a... I, I heard people say, that's the only festival I'll risk my life to get to because the weather was horrible this year. It is bad. You, yeah, the year before that, remember when it came that freeze? Yep. You throw your coffee up in there and it freeze before it hit the ground? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. That didn't really happen, but... Uh, it did last, the year, the year before last. Did it? Yeah. It was that cold. I stayed inside. Yeah? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Paul, we've got a lot to catch up on uh, tonight, but uh, before before I start throwing questions your way, I wonder if you would uh, maybe pick pick one of the songs off the off the newest project you oh, just yeah. put out, and uh, you know, well, let me ask you. I will ask you this: 2021 was kind of a difficult time to put out. Uh, Put out a record, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we weren't able to go out and tour and support it or whatever. Uh, tell us a little bit about the the most recent project you put out and, and pick a song you want to play for us. Well, I, I cut my new record uh, at the end of 2019, actually, right before the pandemic hit. And uh, but when the pandemic hit, we we didn't put it out. We just sat on it for, you know. Uh, are you disagreeing with me? Or no, uh, oh. we, we had some, I'm sorry, and y'all will get to see this on YouTube right now. We just had some major changes in lighting that affect our video, so uh, whatever this, here we go, perfect, sorry about that. That's all right, uh, but anyway, we had to wait a long time to put it out. But, uh, I'm going to sing a song off this record that I got when I was watching a video on YouTube of James Brown high on drugs. It was, that was what it said. The caption said, James Brown high on drugs. So I clicked on it, and it was a clip of him. He had just gotten out of jail for assaulting his wife. It's back in the 80s. And he claimed that he had quit all that. He said he was off drugs, and he, Jesus had came into his heart and all this kind of stuff. And this real straight-laced laced lady that was interviewing him, she said, Mr. Brown, how are things now that you're out of jail? And he said, I feel good. <laughs> I look good. I smell good. I make love good. It's all good. Because he was tweaking on TV. Yeah. And he was just this streamer. But anyway, and uh, he was getting ready to go on a tour. He was going to do a tour in uh, Brazil, in, actually in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And so uh, he kept saying, Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo. And so I made up this song. It's called Sao Paulo. some trouble we did a little time it's good to be free but we don't have a dime ain't no time to sit around feeling insecure the band's back together we're going on a tour we're looking good we're feeling good we're living good it's all good
took a bunch of pictures We wished each other well As we drove away I heard somebody yell We're looking good We're feeling good We're living good It's all good A jam A jam So Paolo Man, I'm, I'm glad you told that story because I was going to ask you where the title for that song came from. That's it. That's it. Little James Brown tweaking. <laughs> his sweat was on his forehead and he's clenching his teeth. It was, it was amazing. Okay. All right. So last night, just to stay current for a minute, last time you and I were together, we were uh, in Steamboat, Colorado, doing a little media thing. And... Uh, you told a story to my buddy, Eric Rains, and we're all friends and family here tonight, so I, I want to ask you about it. it. It was a story about you being on a, a boat and your wife went with you. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I told that one, man. But you want me to tell that one? Well, I mean, it, was, it, it brightened up my day when you, when you told the story in Steamboat, so I don't know. Well, let me start by saying I don't need Viagra. <laughs> I don't need it. It's just an experimental thing. Yeah. <laughs> As I heard how it enhances everything. <laughs> and so uh, we uh, was on this cruise ship, and uh, we were on this cruise ship, and we stopped in Mexico. And at the, in Mexico, you can go get anything from the pharmacy, anything. And so I got some Mexican Viagra. Just, I just bought one. I just bought one. <laughs> it was a normal milligrams. And anyway, so I, I, was going, I was saving it for the right time. We was on a cruise, you know, when I, I don't know why I'm telling this. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I waited till it was date night on the boat. That's where you go out and you're not playing music and you're just having a date and everything. So... We had a nice time and went back to the room. And, uh, you know, I, they said it'd take it about 35 minutes before. And so I followed the instructions. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a few, fun, a few a moments went by and um, it kicked in. <laughs> and, uh, I thought I had a railroad spike in my pants. <laughs> And so uh, we went, so we had a nice time. We had a nice time. And uh, when it was over, I, was, I wanted some ice cream. And so I said, <laughs> I said I'm going to go get some ice cream, sweet, sweetie. You want some ice cream? She said, yeah, uh, bring me some too. So I went down there <laughs> and I got my... When I went down there, I, I put on some sweatpants, but I didn't have any underwear on. And, uh, and so when I got down there and got the ice cream, uh, I'm walking back uh, with my, a cone in each hand, and all of a sudden it came back. <laughs> Whew. And so I had to disown it, you know, <laughs> because... because People recognized me. I had fans, and they were saw. I was, walking, <laughs> to, I was walking like this, and they were saw. Paul loved the show last night. I said, "Thank you." Just kept walking. <laughs> but that's it. That's the story. <laughs> I didn't expect to tell that one. That that story was just as good the second time. <laughs> just as good the second time you know Paul listen one of the things because I get to sit I, I've had the opportunity the privilege to sit next to a bunch of songwriters over the yeah. last 15 years and what I love about getting to hang out with you is you make me laugh but then you got the songs that can 
like hit me right in the heart. And one of the ones that uh, I wanted to ask you about, because I love the story and I love the song, uh, is, is one that you put on a record. It was, it was way back. I think if you have the complete Paul Thorne collection, you'd have about 12 CDs, a- including live shows. Okay? Um, this one was back in 2004, and the single on this uh, record was if, if I Can Get Over You. Oh, yeah, you like that one? I love that song, man. Again, that's one of those ones where you can sit up here, and uh, I love listening to your stories, and you make me laugh, and then you turn right around and give it to me right here. Okay, I'll do that one. Uh, You know, I fell in love for the first time when I was 10 years old, and we're not together anymore. (laughs) I remember uh, she... uh, she didn't call me to break up. She had her other friend call me and break up with me. And uh, when I heard the news, I ran into my room and I collapsed, you know, crying on my Planet of the Ape sheets. <laughs> and uh, my mama brought some chocolate swirl ice cream in there to make me feel better. But we all got somebody in our past that we used to be in love with. And it's just a memory now. I had a puppy love crush when I was 10 years old Her name was Lisa Janine, she lived across the road I caught her with a Cub Scout and a little blue hat They were pushing each other on the swing out back I remember how it almost killed me How could she do me like that? I never thought I'd be the same Now I look back and I laugh If I can get over her I can get over you It's just gonna take some time These things they always do Even though she left scars on my heart And I stayed on the farm I had a broken heart And some fences to mend I knew I'd never Hold her again But I saw her today In the paper Smiling in her Wedding dress So I sent her A card and a blender And I wished her All the best If I can know another another song that that uh, kind of has that that impact and and maybe even more you know maybe maybe even more personal because definitely more recent yeah. uh, is the title cut to the last studio record oh, yeah. ne- never too late to call and and uh, I got to hear that story for the first yeah. time at steamboat too talking about your talking about your sister yeah I wonder if you'd, you'd uh, Tell us about that and play that song for us. Yeah, this song means a lot to me. Uh, uh, my sister, Deborah, she passed away about two years ago, and she was a night owl. She stayed up late, and after shows sometimes, I would call her and just because I was winding down, and I knew she'd be uh, up to talk. And uh, I, sometimes I would apologize and say, Deborah, I'm so sorry I called so late. 
And she said, don't worry. She said, I love you, and it's never too late to call. And uh, I can still hear, hear her saying those words. And so I'm going to sing a song I wrote for her, and it's for all of us that's got a friend we can call. experienced uh, the, the records that he's put together. Um, one of the things uh, that, that I typically try to do here on Real Life Real Music is, uh, you know, kind of delve into a, a little bit more about the person that writes the songs, like, from more of a spiritual or existential perspective. Like, where do they get their motivation to do what they do and write what they write? And... Uh, some of them, it's harder than others to kind of kind of figure that out and figure yeah. out where, where they are. One of the things I love about you is it's never been difficult to know where Paul Thorne's at, <laughs> right? Well, I appreciate and, that. And, and part of that, uh, it, you know, and, and here's what I mean by that. Like, there's, there's two sides to life, if, if you want to look at it as simple as this. There's the light and the dark. Yeah. I you know what I'm saying? That. And like... Uh, I think sometimes artists can focus on one side or the other, but it's rare to me to find somebody that uh, really tells the story across that whole perspective. And I, I really feel like that you do that in well, your music, and I appreciate that as a songwriter. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I'll, 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 I'm going to sing a song that kind of describes who I am, I think. Uh, my father was a Pentecostal preacher, as you know, and uh, my father and my, my uncle, his brother, was a pimp, and and a literal pimp, and and uh, and I, I, they were my caregivers when I was growing up, and they taught me how to live life, and so uh, I'm gonna sing a song about my daddy, and my uncle. Ford, one 
home was Satan's angel and one worked for the Lord. They had some hard earned wisdom, they both became my teachers. I was a young disciple of pimps and preachers. The school of life was open each day, I went to class. When I didn't pay attention, they kicked me in the ass. They were turning out young bitches and converting non believers. I was learning from the masters, pimps and preachers. One drug me through the darkness, one led me to the light. One showed me how to love, one taught me how to fight. I guess you could say I am an overachiever. and preachers They kept me under their wings But when I passed the test They gave me a pinstripe suit And pushed me from the nest Now I'm standing on the corner Recruiting hungry seekers I'm starting a new religion I call it Pimps and preachers One jug me through the darkness One led me to the light One showed me how to love One taught me how to fight I guess you could say I am an overachiever And I owe a debt of gratitude To pimps and preachers This is what they told me Stand there and do nothing But if you want to go far Don't try to please everybody Be proud of who you are Get out there in the game Don't sit up in the bleachers That is the philosophy of Pants and preachers One drug me through the darkness One led me to the light One showed me how to love One taught me how to fight I guess you could say So, uh, okay, so, so given that background, that upbringing, and, and you and I have talked before about the background that you received in your musical education in the churches, right? And That's right. Tell, tell us a little bit about that, about what it was like growing up musically as a Pentecostal preacher's kid, and when did you first decide you wanted to try to write a song or try to play and sing? Uh, the real moment that changed my life, uh, when I got, it was actually when I got in the sixth grade talent show at school. And uh, I was not a very popular kid at school, but I took my guitar and got in the contest. I sang uh, Lionel Richie's Three Times a Lady. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I went, uh, I won first place. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, all, uh, and I went from being an uh, undesirable kid to the most desired boy on the playground. <laughs> and all the girls started liking me. And it wasn't the Lord that led me to music. It was the girls. <laughs> I got you. So when, okay, so you went to the talent show, but when did you decide you wanted to take a stab at writing your own music? Uh, well, I, when I was about 12 years old, I started writing little uh, love songs and stuff. And uh, um just kind of went from there. And uh, actually, my cousin, my first cousin, Stanley, was in the group Parliament and the Funkadelics. Have you ever heard of them? Well, he came to our family Christmas. He was in the Funkadelics at the time. And, he, and I was in awe of him because he was a, like a rock star to me. And, and, uh, and uh, I told him I had written some songs. And he, he came in my bedroom and listened to some songs I had written. And he saw that my songs weren't necessarily good and they weren't they need a little tweaking so uh, he introduced me to a gentleman that's with me tonight named Billy Maddox who I've been writing songs with uh, since I was 17 years old and uh, and uh, 
So that's what got me started. We started writing songs, and then to make a long story short, you know, I got a I got a record deal and all that kind of stuff, and you know, and I, and I made it to the do si do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. That's the short version. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll dive in a little bit more yeah. about that. But I wonder first, uh, let's let's go back to the very first record that, that you put out, okay? And it was a record called Hammer and Nail, right? Yeah. And I, I'm gonna I want to talk to you a little bit. You know, obviously you just sang the song Pimps and Preachers, taught you how to love and taught you how to fight. We're gonna talk about the fight side in a minute. Okay. But I wonder if you would play uh, yeah. Hammer and Nail. For us. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's going to lose a little bit of the meaning if we don't talk about okay, it beforehand. Well, let's talk about it, let's talk talk about it. About it beforehand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. right? here's the thing. Uh, the Tropicana in Atlantic City. Yeah, yeah the Tropicana Hotel Tropicana Casino. Tropicana Hotel in Atlantic City. You were 23 years old. Yeah. And Paul Thorne fought Roberto Duran at the Tropicana <laughs> Hotel in Atlantic City at the age of 23. Don't Here's what I'm going to tell you. I watched it today. You did? Yes. I pulled it up, and I found on YouTube I could find rounds four through round six. All right? Now, dude, you got some good, you got some good punches in on him well, I, during those rounds. I wanted to win, you know, but uh, when, I, when, I, when I fought Duran, uh, I had gotten to where I was... Uh, I was 29 in the world in my weight class, and uh, I got to fight Roberto Duran, and it was televised, and uh, you know, it was, uh, he, there's a, there's a, I was very good, but he was great. There's a difference, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, at, the fight lasted six rounds, and at, at the end of the sixth round, they, the doctor stopped it because I had, had horrific cuts on my face, but but I got some punches in, and you know, I, 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 was, I did not come to lose or lay down. And uh, actually, I busted his eye open, and I'm really happy about that. And, uh, and uh, we both, we actually rode to the hospital in the same ambulance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing uh, that stuck out about him and made him different from all the other fighters I fought is, it wasn't his punching power because there's guys in this room tonight that have punching power, but what made him special is he was incredibly hard to hit. I mean, he could almost tell what you were fixing to do and he would move out of the way of a punch before you even threw the punch. And you know, when you're in a boxing match and you can't hit your opponent, it's really hard to win. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I can imagine the struggle. Yeah, but he was just like, it was, it was like them things in the movies, like the Matrix, where they're like dodging bullets. It was like that, but it was real. And it, it was crazy. And, uh, and I think that same night after, he, after I lost the fight, I can't prove it, but I really honestly think he got with my girlfriend that night after the fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because uh, the next morning we was having breakfast at the hotel restaurant and one of Duran's entourage came up to my girlfriend and, said, and handed her a t-shirt and she said, here's that shirt Duran said he's going to give you. <laughs> so I guess she, she gave him some and got a shirt. I guess, I guess, I guess that's what happened. I don't even know if you follow that. Uh, other than here's the title track to his first right. record called Hammer and Nail. Well, uh, the whole song is not about the fight. Just the last verse is. The other verse is about a couple other things. My boss man said you better get to work before I have to let you go. He just walks around and he pays no mind to the sweat dripping off of my nose. But after 12 long years of him dogging me out, there's one thing I've learned well. I'd rather be a hammer than a nail. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? My girlfriend, she went out on me. 
At least she was honest enough to admit it When she wasn't too busy lying But I came to a realization The last time she kicked my tail I'd rather be a hammer than a nail If you've ever been on the receiving end Then you know what it's like A losing situation Has been the story of my life But I ain't gonna let it beat me down And someday I'll prevail Yes I will I'd rather be a hammer than a nail All right, this is that part I was telling y'all about I climbed in the ring with Roberto Duran And the punches began to rain down He hit me with a dozen hard uppercuts And my corner threw in the towel I asked him why he had to knock me out And he summed it up real well I'd rather be a hammer than a nail If you've ever been on the receiving end Then you know what it's like A losing situation Has been the story of my life But I ain't gonna let it beat me down And someday I'll prevail Yes, I will I'd rather be a hammer than a nail Thank you. Thank you. So go on YouTube and Google Paul Thorne, Roberto Duran fight, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There, Man, there was one punch, like in the sixth round. He was up against the ropes, and you got him, and he just kind of closed his eyes and tried to shake it off. I'm like, Paul's going to win, but I already knew you didn't. But I was still, Paul's going to win. I did, I did land one really good one on him. It was a really good one. And I knew it was a good one because I, you know, I spun his head around for one thing. And it, but when I hit him, he grabbed me and pulled me in because I dazed him. But you, you, it was, if, if I threw 20 punches, I might land one. That's just how hard he was to hit, you know. And, but, you know, you, you win some, you lose some, you know. And even though I lost, it's, it's something that I can say I did, you know. I, I would say so. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so, so, hammer and nail, you got a record deal. Now, that's a very interesting story in and of itself. And, yeah. and that is, you know, you're playing at a, local pizza joint in Tupelo, right? And yeah. you got a bunch of record executives that show up to come check you out. Well, the gentleman I mentioned that I wrote songs with, Billy Maddox, was here tonight. Uh, over a 12-year period, during that time, I was working in a factory because even though I was a professional boxer, unless you're one of the big stars, you don't make a lot of money. So I was working in a factory slash playing in a pizza restaurant two nights a week in the corner with my guitar. And... Uh, and and writing songs, too, two nights a week. And uh, over a 12-year time, uh, we built up this big catalog of music and all these original songs. And Miles Copeland, who was the manager of Sting at the time, got this cassette that I had sent just through a fluke of incidents. And uh, he came down to hear me play in a pizza restaurant in Tupelo, Mississippi. <laughs> and uh, I got offered a, a record deal. And... Uh, and, I, and, you know, I was able to quit my day job. And being a preacher's kid, I never was allowed to go to concerts when I was growing up. That, that was, we couldn't do those kind of things. It was against our religion. So the very, time, very first time I ever attended a concert in my life was I was opening for Sting in, uh, <laughs> at, uh, in Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I wound up getting this. I wound up getting this tour with uh, Jeff, I mean, with uh, Sting, and that was a lot of fun and everything. And, and then after that, uh, the, you know, the guitar player, Jeff Beck? Yep. He, he had heard about me, and he asked me to go on tour with him. So after I did this tour with Sting, I did a tour with, uh, with uh, Jeff Beck. And then I started doing all these tours with folks like, you know, Mark Knopfler and Bonnie Raitt and all this stuff. And then I finally made it to the do si -Do. <laughs> But, 
which has been my goal my whole life, <laughs> to sit with you, Kyle. I'm going to steer us a different direction really fast. So you, so, so you mentioned, you know, uh, that, that uh, it was quite ironic that uh, your, your first concert, because it was against your religion growing up, your first concert was, was opening for Sting. You, you've got a song that you wrote that's, that's pretty funny, that's pretty ironic about somebody doing something that was maybe against their religion. I do. That their daddy didn't know about. I think her name is Joni. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Tell us, tell us a story about Joni. Okay, there's, oh, this girl I knew, uh, she, she, she was from a Jehovah Witness family, and uh, she left home at 18, and she got a job working in a convenience store, and she found out real quick how hard it was to pay your bills on a minimum wage check. So she came to me, and she was just, she had a lot of pride. You know, she didn't want to go back with mom and dad. She wanted to show them she could do it on her own. So we talked about it for a while, me and, did, and, me and her did, and we came up with a solution to her, uh, how she could get some money coming in. So that's what this, <laughs> this is it right here. Expensive blouses. She tells her mama she's cleaning houses. She goes out witnessing, doing the Lord's work all week. But on the weekend, she's making ends meet. Joni, the Jehovah Witness stripper, put a dollar in her G string. And she'll deliver if her daddy only knew He'd probably kill her Johnny the Jehovah Witness stripper One night down at the club Her daddy walked in He didn't recognize his daughter dancing she wore a blonde wig, he had sunglasses When she got naked, he started clapping For Johnny, that Jehovah Witness stripper Put a dollar in her G-string And she'll deliver if her daddy only knew He'd probably kill her Johnny the Jehovah Witness stripper If you ask her why she does it She looks at it this way She says I'm counting my blessings Every night when I get paid She once lived in poverty And now everything's alright The Lord showed her how to make a thousand dollars a night Johnny Jehovah Witness stripper Put a dollar in a G-string And she'll deliver If her daddy only knew He'd probably kill her John F. the Jehovah Witness stripper do 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 Okay, all right, so we, we've covered the growing up and, and musical influence. We've, we've talked about you starting to write songs, getting your record deal, 29th fighter in the world in your weight class. I mean, you, you know, you've done, you've done a lot up to that point. Now, then you talked about this catalog of songs that you collected over a period of, of 12 years. Uh, you've also had a lot of success like many people here know you as a, as a performer and they're a fan of, of you playing your own songs. But you've also had a lot of success as a, as a songwriter of other people recording the songs that you've written. Tell it, what, like what was the first cut that you, that you um, ever got where you went, oh man, people will record my songs. The first cut I ever got was on a group called Shenandoah. Have you heard of them? Oh yeah. Yeah, the, the, that was the first cut I ever got and it was actually 
a song I wrote about being a preacher's kid. It was called Wednesday Night Prayer Meeting. And uh, so uh, I think I ought to sing that one. I think you should. Yeah. But anyway, I had a bunch of people cut my songs, you know, Ronnie Millsap, Tanya Tucker, uh, Toby Keith, Sawyer Brown, folks like that. Anyway. But this is about being a preacher's kid. Straighten the pews on the hardwood floor Daddy shook every hand as they gathered in We were prayer warriors in a world of sin We sang ain't no grave gonna hold me down The sisters started clapping and somebody shout The spirit would rise and fill the house And the walls came tumbling down Little walls came tumbling down Oh, the devil took a beating At Wednesday night prayer meeting We heard hellfire preaching At Wednesday night prayer meeting Oh, amazing grace fell like a flood we all got washed in the blood Oh, that's just the way it was It winds in that prayer meeting Now I'm standing at the crossroads oh, I hadn't seen a lot of Well, I'm standing in a valley all by myself There's a road to the right and a road to the left The shadows have fallen, I'm all alone But there's still a light shining that leads me home It's a candle in the window of That little country church I love I can hear them singing on Wednesday night We'll meet you on the other side Took a beating at Wednesday night prayer meeting. We heard hellfire preaching at Wednesday night prayer meeting. Oh, amazing grace fell like a flood, and we all got washed in the blood. Oh, that's just the way. That was, that was the first song I ever got cut. Man, that's cool. By Shenandoah, yeah. What a great group, too. Yeah. How'd you feel when you got that call? It was exciting. I was, I was playing at the Bluebird. I was doing, I was doing a songwriter night, and the producer heard the song, me singing, and I got a cut. And that's how Man, started. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so one of the other bands that you mentioned that's one of my favorites is... Uh, the band Sawyer Brown. Which which songs did they cut? They cut a bunch of them, but uh, they, the one of them that they recorded was called 800 Pound Jesus. Okay. It's a song about a statue in my dad's yard. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, uh, but anyway, and it got, it actually, it, it wound up, uh, that when it came out, it got like Christian Country Song of the Year, and I got a trophy and all that kind of stuff. It was kind of neat, you That's know. That's awesome. And, yeah. and they recorded, uh, uh, Mission Temple. Fire they did. Hand, they did. They, they recorded okay. that one. Bunch, bunch of others. You know. Who cut? Uh, who cut? Burned down the trailer park. That was Billy Ray Cyrus. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He recorded that. Yeah. He. Uh, actually, I hung up on him because uh, I was at the gym. I was at the gym working out, and somebody he got my phone number somehow, and he called me, and he said, "Hey, Paul, it's Billy Ray Cyrus." I just hung the phone up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because you thought somebody was messing with you or because yeah, you didn't like Billy Ray Cyrus? No, I love Billy Ray Cyrus. He's one of the nicest guys. He really is. And, you know, uh, when I, he invited me down, and uh, I, sang, I sang background vocals on his record and everything. And, and uh, when we were in the vocal booth together, I said to him, I said, man, you need to cut that mullet off. <laughs> I said, you're a good-looking guy. You got everything going on, but you got to get rid of that mullet. And about a month later, I saw him on TV. It was gone. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Tell us, tell us about Burn Down the Trailer Park. Play that one for us. I could play that one, yeah. Yeah, okay. This is just a song about uh, newlyweds, you know, starting out you know, and living together in their trailer park. That's it. <laughs> And it's, didn't, it's not, didn't end well. I bought some money and sold my car. I put an Airstream trailer up on blocks. That satellite dish was my first mistake. She started watching Oprah Winfrey and Ricky Lake. She cut me down to once a week At supper time there wasn't nothing to eat I was paranoid and scared to death She came home with aquavelva on her breath Find down a trailer park Shoot the pink flamingos out in the yard I can't live here since you broke my heart I'm gonna trail apart it gets worse <laughs> she hired the neighbor's son to cut our grass she gave him cold iced tea and a piece of pie my landlord came while I was out of town our pipes got fixed and the rent went down we fell asleep with the late show on And now it's 3 a.m. I wake up and she's gone I got a strong suspicion she's at it again And since I don't know which trailer she's in I'm gonna find down the trailer park to Shoot the pink flamingos out in the yard I can't live here since you broke my heart I'm gonna Dr. Phil don't understand Dr. Oz don't understand Mari Povich sure don't understand I got a can of gas and I'm a dangerous man I'm gonna find down a trailer park Shoot the pink flamingos out in the yard I can't live here since you broke my heart I'm gonna That's a good one. Thank you. It's a little too uh, it's a little too picturesque for me to not think that you didn't live that in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I did a different way. It was, it's a, I, yeah, I had the same story, but just different. Yeah. <laughs> Are y'all doing all right out there? Are y'all having a good time tonight? Okay. All right. I need y'all. This is where I need you guys. Okay. You got to be. You got to help me out here. Paul, we need you to do a liner to start the radio program. So if you'll just say, uh, this is Paul Thorne, and this is real life, real music. That's your line, okay? This is Paul Thorne, and this is real life, real music. And then I need you guys to just go absolutely nuts, okay? All right? For about four minutes, and then I'm going to cut you off. No, just kidding. It'll be quick. This is Paul Thorne, and this is real life music. Almost, it? almost. Hey, hold, hey, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I hold on. said it wrong. I said it wrong. I'm dyslexic. What? Yeah, yeah. Real life, yeah, yeah. real music. All right, this is real life. And oh, wait, real, wait, wait. This wait, is Paul Thorne. Oh, I forgot to tell you my name. This is Paul Thorne, and this okay, is okay. real life, real music. 
Hello, everybody. This is Paul Thorne, and this is Real Life, Real Music. Perfect. Perfect. Man. You worked your whole career to get here and then give us that kind of liner? Golly, Paul. I'm just kidding. Thank you. I told you guys I was going to thank our sponsors. Uh, let, me, let me do my Porter Wagner moment here on the, like the Grand Ole Opry here at, at do si -Do. And uh, we, we could not have made it this far um, in, in our exploration of singer-songwriters music like we're getting to do tonight if it wasn't for our corporate partners. Um, and we've got three of them that are here with us tonight. And as I mentioned earlier, the... Uh, it, it's almost like we've got everybody that's involved in a real estate transaction as sponsors of our show this year, starting with the people that actually build the communities where people buy homes. They're our newest sponsor, uh, and they're here representing two of their newest communities that are in this area. One of them is in the Highlands. It's just south of here. Uh, it's called the Highlands. Uh, there's some information right in front of you on your table, a little trifold brochure you can take with you. And uh, their other location is Chambers Creek that's up in Willis. And it's our friends from Caldwell Communities. And what I can tell you is I've had the opportunity to get to know these folks and understand more everything that goes into the master plan communities that they put together. And man, everything down to the details of the trails that you get to walk on through the woods, uh, the lakes, the rivers, the uh, resort style pools, the amenities. It's an amazing uh, process that they go through to bring these communities to life. And the main thing that I'll say about Cal uh, Caldwell communities is they're led by people that believe in putting money back into the communities that they build. Uh, and that's why they sponsor things like Real Life Real Music. They're avid music lovers, and uh, man, we appreciate them being here tonight. So Caldwell Communities, thank you guys for everything you do to make nights like this possible. Okay, then once the community is built and you got homes on the ground, somebody's gotta help you buy them. <laughs> and that's where, uh, that's where Griffin Realty Group comes in. Tonight we've got uh, Jason and Angie Laird with uh, Griffin Realty Group. And again, they've helped, the group has helped over 200 people um, with real estate tra transactions and what is, as you guys know if you live around here, it's a crazy real estate market right now. They know what they're doing. If you want to know what your house is worth, you want to put it on the market, or you want to buy a property, you want to talk to uh, Jason and the folks at Griffin Realty Group. So thank you guys for what you do to make tonight possible. And then last but not least, you want to buy a house, you got to do all the paperwork. I don't know about you, but I've signed my life away so many times. And Really, nobody made it easier than Chicago Title Houston. I'm not just saying that. We did a refinance uh, about two years ago, and uh, those folks made it easy for us. And man, I can tell you what, if you're a real estate professional in here and you're involved in the closing process, you need to talk to those guys. So Chicago Title, thanks for helping us do this tonight. We appreciate you. Okay. Paul, I've been leading you all over the place asking you about songs. I've been so rude, I haven't even asked you what you would like to play tonight. So why don't you just pick a song yeah. you want to play and tell us about it. Okay, uh, I want to sing this song right here. Um, it started when I was having a conversation with my, mom, with my mom. I was out in California, and I was just had the blues. I'd been away from home a long time, and I wanted to hear a voice. And uh, I said, how you doing, Mama? She said, I'm okay, I guess. I just need a little rest. And that one phrase became the opening line of this song. And... And then I sat around and thought about things I remember her saying to me through my life that's helped me and blessed me. And so all the words in this song is just words my mother has said to me. And so I hope you'll get something out of it. It sure gave me something. Thank you, I'm okay, I guess. need a little rest I'll catch up on my sleep tonight I ain't complaining that's life I'll 
got blueberries in the yard I bought a hundred mason jars I'm gonna pick them when they're ripe Another season that's life Wipe that tear out of your eyes Enjoy the journey that's life There's a touch of fall in the wind I can't wait till you come back again the brightest star in my sky I wish you could stay that life I know it's time for you to go Here's a sandwich for the road It's always hard to say goodbye That tear out of your eye Beyond the clouds The sun still shines You're in my prayers Every night Enjoy the journey That's my mother's words okay on that note can I play a song for you Paul I want you to okay I want to play your song because uh, in in kind of a similar deal I've, I've been married to my wife for 20 it'll be 29 years in in June yeah and uh, just like that song you just wrote uh, with with words from your from your mom, uh, when you've been married as long as I have, you start to pick up on some of those phrases that oh, they yeah. that they oh, say. Yeah. And so I I just got out a piece of paper and started writing down a lot of those and uh, put them put them together in this song. So since you sang that sweet song, all right, for your mom, I'll play you this one, okay? Right. So these are all my wife's words. It goes like this. Pick up your shoes, wash your face, brush your teeth, and don't be late. Don't stay out all night with your friends. Cause you come in drunk and think you're funny, but my floors are clean and your boots are muddy, and this morning you forgot the trash again. <laughs> but this was my comeback right here. If you want to be my lover, stop acting like my mother. Cause it freaks me out and leaves me so confused. Yeah, I don't know whether to hug you or lay you down and love you. Yeah, babe, it's up to you. You'll have to choose. Yeah, I want to see you in a satin gown in the bedroom playing around. Come on, girl, and flash me that pretty smile. Put on your come get me pumps and get this cowboy jump and let's do something we ain't done in a while. If you wanna be my lover, stop acting like my mother Cause it freaks me out and leaves me so confused Yeah, I don't know whether to hug you or lay you down and love you Yeah, babe, it's up to you, you'll have to choose At this point, there's no good way to end a song like this So this was the, this was the best I could come up with I got the perfect plan, I think, to redirect your motherly instinct and keep you from going off like you just did. All we need is a little alone time, a hot bath and a bottle of red wine. Slip off to bed and we'll get you a kid. 
Cause if you wanna be my lover, stop acting like my mother. Cause it freaks me out and leaves me so confused. Yeah, I don't know whether to hug you or lay you down and love you. Yeah, baby, it's up to you. You'll have to choose. Who, yeah, baby, it's up to you. You'll have to choose. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. And my wife's here tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I just heard somebody request a song yeah. over here, and it's one of the ones I wanted to hear off of the uh, new record called Two Tears of Joy. I can try. Can you try it? I'll try. You want to tell us about it? Man, that, it's a great song. And if you don't, if you if you don't have the new record, uh, never too late to call. Do you guys have any CDs with you tonight? We got here. We got the new one here. Okay, so we got some new CDs and T-shirts and hats and stuff over in Merchland over here uh, after the show, which I don't even know how long we've been. Not long enough. We, we've we've got some more show, but make sure and come see Paul and tell him hello. And they're playing full band here at Dosido -Do tomorrow night. If you've enjoyed the show tonight and want to see it, see it presented in a different way uh, with Paul and his band, they're going to be here tomorrow night. I think there's some seats, so, so pick up a ticket and come tomorrow night. All right, I'll give us a shot. I haven't played in a while. Like the weight of the world is sitting on top of my back I like to go fishing if I don't catch nothing Well, I'm okay with that I sit on a bank with some sweet tea to drink And I breathe in the morning air When I look at the sky and the clouds rolling by I believe there's a God somewhere I don't have everything What do I really need? I've been such a lucky boy I'm crying to tears of joy Tell you it ain't no picnic living with me So many times I've needed forgiveness From friends and family They cut a lot of slack They've taken me back Over and over again The mercy they've shown Has made me want to be a better man ask you about a record that we haven't talked about yet. You released it in 2014, and it was uh, may maybe, I don't know, six months, nine months before you came and did this show the very first time, and that was a record that ended up meaning a, a whole lot to me and my family. My wife, you know, you got to yeah. 
talk to her a little bit about it tonight is a record called Too Blessed to Be Stressed. Yes. Man, what a great record. Tell us a little bit about that one. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you, as a fan of Paul Thorns, if you have not listened to that record, um, you need to either get your hands on it or listen to it on whatever your streaming platform is. You need to listen to the record, Too Blessed to Be Stressed, because it's a great record. Tell us a little bit about that one. Maybe pick a song off that record. Well, I can't remember the names of the songs. You'll have to tell me. But, I can't. Uh, uh, <laughs> But uh, too blessed to be stressed is a phrase I heard growing up, this, especially when we would go visit the black churches. Uh, this is lady, Sister Johnson. She's a black, nice black lady. I called her Sister Johnson. Uh, you, every time you'd say, how you doing today, Miss Sister Johnson? She said, I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> you know, and that, that was just sort of, it just became the, the name of the, the, the album and everything. Can you think, think of any of the songs that's on there? Man, I, uh, I can think of a lot of the songs that are on there, but I want to... What's that? Resurrection Day? That's not on that album. Uh -uh. That's on a different album. This one's got uh, backslide, I Backslide on... Backslide uh, on Friday? Yeah, yeah, that one. It's got uh, uh, Everything's Gonna Be All Right. Ooh, that's yeah, a good yeah. one. Man, this yeah. one, this this record is, uh, it's it's got great stuff. Hang on one second. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to read okay. you all the titles yeah. so that you can tell me. I can't Which do all of them without my band. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm saying I can't do them all by myself. I, certain songs I can. It depends on which one it is. Okay, let's see. We got Everything's Gonna Be All Right, Too Blessed to Be Stressed, Everybody Needs Somebody, I Backslide on Friday, This Is a Real Goodbye, Mediocrity is King, Don't Let Nobody Rob You of Your Joy. That's a good one. Yeah. Get You a Healing, Old Stray Dogs and Jesus. What kind of roof do you live under and no place I'd rather be? Okay, I'll pick one of them. Uh, you want me to sing one of them? Yeah, okay. I mean, if you, if, you know, if you're okay, feeling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If this you're is feeling a, the spirit move. Okay. Well, I'm going to sing the one called uh, Old Stray Dog and Jesus. I'm going to do that one. Yeah, really. And uh, uh, this, uh, you ever seen on the local news and you, when you're watching the news at night, they'll show somebody that's just got caught doing a crime and they'll have their handcuffs on and they'll be walking to the to the jail you seen do they do that here yeah well uh i was uh watching this guy uh being taken into the jail he had been robbing storage sheds and he was doing the walk and he had it while he and he was on the news and everything and he had on a paul thorn t-shirt <laughs> I can't remember. I'm drawing. I, I'm sorry. I hadn't sung in a while. It's the the, the first that y'all heard enough of it. I was trying to see if the lyrics were on Apple, but they're not I helping us I out. hadn't sang in a while, man. But that first part was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I got it. Okay. The pain pill jar is empty. My wild Irish rules is gone. But I found tube model airplane glue and I'm getting my buzz on why is everybody judging me when the good book says judge not this old straight dog and Jesus is all the friends I've got I've never felt so lonely I've never been so blue Lost the 
everything But I sure have lost a lot This old straight dog and Jesus For all the friends I've got The glory road, recovery home Is where I now reside They gave me a King James Bible a sack of Purina's pride There's a smoking section By a dead oak tree At the back of the parking lot The soul straight dog and Jesus For all the friends I've got I've never felt so lonely I've never been so blue My world keeps Smaller is down to the chosen few God knows I ain't lost everything But I sure have lost a lot The soul straight dog and Jesus Have you had a good time tonight, Paul? I sure I had have had time. a good time. Yeah, Y'all had a good time tonight? Everybody doing okay out there? Okay. We got time for a couple more. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Time for a couple more. All right. Let me see here. You know, y'all know who Jerry Jeff Walker is? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, one of my claim, one of my proudest moments is he, he recorded one of my songs. And this is it. I'm going to sing it. Stop love. 
loving me Where was I when you stopped loving me So, so let me let me ask you this. Um, well, first off, let, let me say this. Thank you guys for being here tonight and being such an attentive audience. Um, you heard uh, Gabe told us a, a few of the shows that we have coming up, and and I want to tell you about one that uh, I'm I'm really excited about. It's not going to happen until June first, but they just confirmed it last week, and that is I'm going to get to sit and talk uh, to Winona Judd about her songs, and those tickets are on sale now so if you want to grab them that one's going to sell out for sure um but next up hot off of his first appearance on the jimmy fallon show i've got joshua ray walker is going to be sitting up here on stage with me uh in a couple of weeks and then my buddy uh and i'm gonna go ahead and embarrass him he's in the audience with us tonight uh was a winner of the voice mr sundance head's going to be up here with us uh in in just a few weeks and those tickets those tickets are available um so yeah, if you've enjoyed this format tonight where we get to talk about the music and talk a little bit more about the careers in the song, then please come join us. Okay, Paul, I, I want to ask you, I'm going to ask you about one. You can tell me you don't want to play it if you don't, and then you pick one to finish us with. But a song that just, uh, it made me laugh the first time I heard it, and I, I, every time I think about it, I laugh. And that's a song that you wrote uh, called, I Guess I'll Just Stay Married. I was, that's exactly what I was going to play. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, it is. Because, listen, um, I need all the married people in the audience to listen to this song. <laughs> that was a good setup. <laughs> I got lucky. On my birthday, my wife reluctantly let me have my way. She said, this is for you, do what you must do, let me know when you're through. I thought things would change when we tied the knot, but the life I dreamed of what I got when she says no she means no hell no I couldn't get laid when I was single if you threw me in a woman's prison Post a child for total rejection. Celibacy is a cross that I must carry. I couldn't get laid when I was single. I guess I just stay married. This last verse it speaks to all the men. And uh, on the last chorus, I'm gonna bring out my surprise backup singer. I've got a bulldog, he lives on a chain. I know what he's going through. I feel his pain He don't have no fun On that doggy run He never gets none He's got potential If he could get free But he's on a short leash Just like me He goes through life with hungry eyes watching bitches go by I couldn't get laid when I was 
a single If you do me in a woman's prison He's in a prison I am the poster child For total rejection I just stay married. Have y'all had a good time tonight? Man, Paul, I, I can't tell you thanks enough. I know you're playing do si do tomorrow night, full band. Thank you for adding this show on and coming and hanging out with us and talking tonight. I always love being with you, Kyle. I really do, man. Well, I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that and run with it. Why don't you, uh, why don't you pick one more you want to close us out with tonight? And, All right. Uh, and we're going to call it a night. Uh, Chicago title. Caldwell Communities, Griffin Realty Group. Thank you, guys. Thank everybody at do -Si do Thank your bartenders and waitresses. Man, thank our sound man back there. Thanks for making the sound so good. All right, what you want to play? All right, on the course, y'all know what to do. I saw a black man with a Bible and a sparkler in his hand. He was holding a tent revival and running a fireworks stand. He said to him, though the world is coming, so you better get on your knees. Today buy rockets a two for one, but salvation's free. He said, I quit my job at a big church where the milk and money float. To sell cherry bombs for Jesus at a tent beside the road. I ain't in it for the money, most cars pass on by But I pay the rent on New Year's and the 4th of July Here at the Holy Ghost Big Bang Theory Pentecostal Fine Brimstone A Mission Temple Fireworks stand They say fireworks are dangerous they can blow up in your face So you better read the instructions Light the fuse and get away These things are made in China So it's easy to see How a man who worships Buddha Ain't got no guarantee This is the Holy Ghost Big Bang Theory Pentecostal Fine Brimstone a mission temple fireworks stand He said everything I'm selling is all going up in smoke This world is like an atom bomb is ready to explode When the trumpet sounds and the law comes back I promise you one thing I'll be a human by a rocket And I'll go at it with a bang I'll leave this Holy Ghost Big Bang Theory Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Thorne. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. That was a lot of fun.